What's up? I just want to give you a quick heads up. When I'm talking in this clip, my voice is distorted, so I want to make sure you're able to adjust the volume for your ears or whatever, make sure they don't hurt. But the conversation is too good for you not to hear it, so we went ahead and made the clip anyway. This is from episode four of No Labels Necessary. The future episodes are just fine audio-wise. Check this out. The information is too good to miss. Now, we got to flip into some advice. One of my favorite parts about... <laughs> Giving advice. <laughs> not, not giving advice, showing <laughs> advice. That's the part right there. Showing advice. You know, other people saying the things that we know are valuable. Key 24 one Savages manager, uh, as you mentioned her earlier. No, you mentioned 21 earlier. She dropped some gems, as she often does on Twitter. But this is actually a video. It's probably the first video I've seen her giving advice like, like this. Yeah, she actually. don't do a lot of video content. I think she got a couple podcast interviews yeah. out, but it's not, it's not a lot, let's, for sure. Let's check this out. Oh, come on, man. Y'all get really, really involved and hands on with every artist that I work with. But if I see the energy is not matched, then it's like, okay, this is probably not a situation that's going to work for me because I'm not going to out outwork you. And so at some point, you just have to like kind of weigh the pros and cons. Like, okay, is this worth my energy? Is this worth my time? Is this serving me? Is this along my journey too? Because sometimes you'll just be working on something that's not even aligned with where you want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. That comes with just experience and learning things and, and falling and, mista and making mistakes. All right, I'm gonna play that. Hold up, I'm, I'm gonna throw another one in here because I feel like they're so related. They're so related. Check this out as well from La Russell. Uh, I don't know why starting to mute check this out here tietta t is over ah! here so man i met tietta <laughs> last year and uh i had about three thousand followers we currently sit at like we currently sit at about five hundred thousand in a year's time tietta has came in and been uh, a right hand and a backbone she's helped me Shit. grow my whole business and brand by a million times multiple yeah. from just work she works like Ain't nobody work hard as me except T. Like, she just enabled me Come to be on. more artists, right? And to be able to really focus on my craft and cultivating these experiences and every idea I've had with the selling stocks, selling gold cards, doing our own shows, creating. She, she created all these forms to execute them. You know, and um, T, 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 you, T, you doing independent incredible. work, T? You doing outside work? She got one artist at a <laughs> time. So you oversee? He, you the nigga he talking about? And, 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 hey, trying to and, steal and, his work. And she <laughs> own, and she own equity in everything she's ever touched. That's, That's dope. Right. That's over a hundred pieces of songs, content, music, everything she's touched. She own equity in. Congratulations, have, T. Have you seen any of the return yet? Have you starting to see the return? For certain, it, the distro account it, coming in. Yeah. <laughs> it's changing your life. Yeah, that's because that's Keep a new jacket. Retire. You didn't, you didn't have that jacket. All right, looking at those two back to back. <laughs> what's the first? I, I want to let you go first, man. What, what's the first thing you think? The time aspect, like working on the thing you want to be there long term. Actually, I think that's a good point. That's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> I just want to know what you think. I, I'm not trying to lead you, man. I thought Search. you were trying to, yeah, okay. See, whatever, you know, whatever speaks to you, man, whatever God drops on your soul, man. No, nah, yeah, so I, I, I thought I was missing something. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. But, no, nah. nah, I mean, the, the key clip initially, I think, is just, you know, going back to the old adage of, like, I don't want to work with somebody that I'm working harder than, especially an artist, bro, because, you know, we've seen it. There are so many things that, that the artist needs to do to make what you do be successful and there's nothing you can do about it if they don't do those mm. things, right? Like with us in marketing, like, hey, we need pieces of content for this. I can't get up and go make it for you. I can't be you. So if you don't do it, I have the drive to create certain things, man, you know, pretty much about to be wasting your time coming up <laughs> coming up here and doing something with us. There's not much we can do for you, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that's just like that being reinforced. But the part that she said that really stood out to me was the like, yo, are you working on something that you don't even care to do in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years? The only part that I would semi-disagree with is just because we're in music and there's no like real path to go through things to get experience. Sometimes you have to work on things that you may not see yourself doing in a couple of years because it will give you the experience or connection to build that's what, true. what that's you true. want to do. So that's yeah. the one point was like, it's right. very hard. Like, like for us now, like who's to say in 10 years, we don't want to do marketing anymore. Like we don't know that right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But maybe we don't, we feel that way like around year nine. We're like, damn, I don't do that shit next year, right? But there's no way I can know that now. But I know that if I do feel that way, 
eight, nine, ten years, whatever experiences we got through doing the marketing thing will probably carry over into it, right? And we'll, right. Be, able, we'll be able to build off. So that's the one part of it I kind of was like, eh, about, but like everything else, I feel like was dope. Now this the Russell clip. This is Russell clip. Uh uh-huh. It's a Russell clip. It's really beautiful. <laughs> because one, one, just the story of, hey, I was at 3,000 followers when this person that literally changed my life came into my life to help me. Because her clips that she was making for him is the reason he started going viral on TikTok. And I don't know. So that was her who was putting him on? Because I know he, I mean, he still doesn't really have a TikTok, right? Well, they have like a no? company page. Like they have the good company page. Right, which right, I think right, it's like right. his brand. So he just posts all his videos on there. He doesn't have like a little Russell page. I don't know. Right. But that whole like style of like the vintage looking, you know what I'm saying, video clip with the bright yellow phone. Like that was her making it. Because mm-hmm. the only, way, only reason I knew that is because I remember the first time I found him was through a viral TikTok of him rapping, I think, um, one, of his, one of his earlier songs. And then he had another clip where that same song that was going viral she comes into the camera and she's rapping it and like it's just a video of like her rapping his verse on the on the on the um on camera and then he comes in at the end of the video takes the mic from her and finishes on that was probably like one of his earlier viral videos too right because she just, does poetry or something like that yeah, it's like poetry writer and stuff and i just remember seeing her tag i'm like man who's this and i go to her page and i look at her page and she's using a lot of the same fonts and like colors and styling that she that his post has so i'm like oh this must be the person behind like her post i mean his post right like putting it together and then you know, more information comes out, he talks a little bit more, and it's like, yeah, this is the person pretty much driving my crib direction. So it's like, one, he was able to find somebody with that type of eye and skill set super early on. I can't imagine that at 3,000 followers, he had a lot of leverage to, to, to get her to do it for free. Right. She probably just saw the vision, like, hey, I fuck with you, maybe they were friends or something. I don't know too much of their, their background, but probably your friends or, you know what I'm saying, good acquaintance or something like that. But it's like, hey, I have this thing that you believe in, you have this skill set that could believe that could um, benefit this thing I believe in. Is there any way that we can bring these two worlds together and make magic happen? And mm-hmm. you know, if they did, like he said, like he found an agreement, giving her equity and everything. I feel like it's unheard of, especially for like I'm. I'm thinking her role probably technically would be like creative director or something like that. I would, yep. I would be thinking. I don't know if creative directors typically get equity in the stuff they work <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, because she's not technically a manager, to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't think so. To my knowledge, but I mean. Now you have to think about it. We talk about artists trying to see themselves as companies more and more, mm-hmm. right? As you grow, as the industry evolves. So with company comes equity. Yeah. Like as a real conversation, I'm not saying just go divvy out F- equity to everybody. Yeah. You know, they got to deserve it. Has to be strategic. Has to make sense. But that's a real conversation now, yeah. right? So it could be everybody in your team, just like you have companies where literally every single one of their employees has the ability to have some level of stock within yeah. the company. There's some companies that are like that, right? Do you want to be that type of company or is it just a certain, you know, amount of people who you interact with and then everybody else is a contractor or you have people who work for you, but they have other forms of compensation and work days and all that stuff. If yeah. you think about yourself that way, what is the culture that you want to build with your organization your team yeah. right around you and i think that's something that a lot of artists aren't doing yet and la russell you know he's been i mean he's been moving different in a lot of ways that i appreciate and this is one of them just not even fully off of understanding how he's looking at his company but just off of the relationship right you can appreciate yo, mm-hmm. this person's giving me value and i'm going to give them a real return a piece mm-hmm. i don't know what that might look it could be point oh 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 i don't know what that is right she yeah. seems happy though that's yeah. <laughs> you know from what i can tell from afar so right that's a real conversation and you take key all right talking long term all right you want to be a part of something that you can see long term and then you com- combine that with artists looking at themselves as a company now do you want to your goal should be right to find people who want to be a- on for the long haul but does that mean that artists should be looking for CEOs and chief of marketing, marketing, you know, um, I don't know, chief of operations, whatever, right? Like looking for those people as positions and not just trying to hire a intern, right? To get a little work done, right? Not just to hire, oh shoot, even a marketer just for the sake of marketing, yeah. right? Like, you can have there's a difference between hiring a marketer obviously we have an agency right and it might sound like hey we're giving advice against us but 
like if if you have a marketer on your team, especially as you grow, you still might work with agencies, right? There's a lot of these companies that have their own marketing organizations, whether it's in, inside music or out. They have like the labels, they still hire us, yeah, right? For multiple reasons. Maybe you have somebody who's really strategic and they can handle all the rollout, roll out like a product manager, right? But they you, they still need other people to execute, yeah. right? So you still might want to find somebody who has that strong vision and the ability to understand marketing at depth, right? Uh, like, but that means you got to see that person as long term. You should be looking for those pieces in your team of somebody who can think that way. And then, yeah, you might fill out the the work and the execution, the deliverables with a third party. But I think a lot of people are just trying to third party their way through everything. Mm -hmm. And now you got to charge. You, got, you get charged every time you want to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you do this work, but you can't you don't have any like insight and or, um, or data or anybody who's been trained. So if you think about it like this. Even if you're working with a marketer, right, a music marketer that's technically not on your team, like you're working with us. We know when we work with our clients time and time again, we begin to get to the point where we look at them like their own pages. We keep up with them naturally mm -hmm. and we'll just send them over ideas just because because we've built that relationship or we we can't stop our mind from seeing the connection and thinking of ideas. Yeah. Right. And now we know the history. We understand your goals more. So at least if you can find somebody to work long term with, there's an extreme value there. Right. Because the cost of training is very high. Like we know that when you hire somebody, we hire somebody in, take three months, six months, maybe to get somebody to be cold at what they do. Yeah. And every time you work with somebody new, yeah, they might be well trained in what they do, but they're not necessarily well trained in doing it for you. Yeah, in your system. In your system and your personality, the things that you like, your style of content, the shit that you, you're you comfortable with, the shit you're uncomfortable with, but you still need to be pushed on and the stuff that you're uncomfortable with, but it really needs to be like, nah, this ain't me. Yeah. Like, I don't wear dresses or I don't, you know what I mean? Or I don't do funny stuff. I'm a yeah. chill personality. Or I, or I, got, I, I love the money phone, man. Like, I, I got to keep doing it. Whatever it is for you, like the team gets to know that right yeah. and we can make recommendations right and that's the same thing goes for your internal but also how you move external so um i think it's really important for like this type of stuff what la russell's doing man like yeah. find those people outside of your manager that can be long term too if you've gotten any value from the content on our channel i want you to stop and think about how much value is that worth in money this is the same channel and content that's brought value to so many people who are going to do big things in the industry, but we don't want to charge you anything except for a simple donation in the form of a click of that subscription button. So please click that subscribe button and we're going to keep giving you that value again and again and again. Yeah, and, and I think it speaks a lot too to have like this person, because going back to the equity thing, right, like the 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 beautiful part of finding someone that's willing to take the equity is one, you probably don't have to put up too much money in the beginning, right? Maybe money to make sure they have like the equipment and things to do their job for you. Yeah. But then two, it, it creates this incentive for them to work just as hard as you are. Because now like every win you get, every W you get, right? Every, you know, every time you level up, they also level up because they get a percentage of it, right? So it's like, like I said, maybe we don't know, 2%, whatever. And the first year is 2% of a thousand dollars. But then five years later, it's two percent of five million, and then ten like, years later, it's two percent, you know, twenty million. Right? It's like so they're incentivized to continue helping you and building you out because they literally see that result come down to you. Versus like, you know, someone like us, like we talked about before, it's like, but we could take an artist from zero to ten million streams, and like, you know, all we got was whatever we charged them for in the beginning, right? Like, there's yep. no, there's no real like extra incentive beyond like just doing a good job and, and reputation and things like that. Which are important, but like going back to what you said, like there's there's a a very strategic long term value in having a person that is very invested in your success. Mm -hmm. Like outside of just like you know like keep taking us like we're invested in your success within the campaign window, right? So if you hire us for six months, for six months, and you know if we like you enough, of course, even beyond that, like we still want you to win. But like we're invested in your success during the time we were contracted for. Versus this person on your team, 
that is only eating when you eat, they invest in that shit 24 seven, but they going to sleep, mm-hmm. waking up, thinking about, damn, how can I get do lit? Right. How can I, how can I, man, that last post only got a thousand views and in, in the 12% watch time, right? How can I get that up for him? Right. Like, how can we, can, how can we get yep. that going? And like, it, it creates, I think a level of like hustle and the people that work, work for you that sometimes just like paying them out. Right. Just what it doesn't do. Right. You know? And I think, I even think sometimes like one of the, the biggest lessons that like we probably learned as like agency owners is like, learning like what incentivizes your employees and what incentivizes your people, right? Mm-hmm. Like we talk about some people are incentivized by status. So you work for me for a year, at the end of that shit, you're gonna be you're gonna be litty, bro. Everybody in the industry gonna know who you yep. are, right? You you incentivize the status or a lot of people have money incentivized. Hey, I can pay you this much, this year, next year it increases this much, whatever the year after that is an increase to this much. Some people are incentivized by freedom. Hey, yep. bro, you can do this shit from wherever you at. I don't care if you in, in Miami, you know what I'm saying, getting drunk on the beach. Just get this shit done by 1 o'clock. You get this shit done by 1, you can do whatever you want to do for the rest mm-hmm. of the day, right? And then that's probably like other small things that people are those sending are, about, about. Those are definitely the main three, though. Yes, yeah, always the main, the main, three. main three. So it's like the the bigger point, I think, that even kind of comes from his situation, even outside of just equity, is like you're finding these people that, are, that you think could really benefit you. And you don't have the infrastructure or the money you have to like just pay them out right. It's like figure out what else is important to them that maybe you can provide. Cause I'm pretty sure like outside of just the money aspect to it, like you said, like I, I want to say she's like T's like a writer or she has like other creative aspirations. Mm-hmm. Then she has this crazy case study of an artist that she like he just said it, but she took me from three thousand followers to half a million in a year's time. She could probably go to any other artist or creative person mm-hmm. right now. She wanted to build out an agency build out an agency, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and have things going for herself because she has the, the working proof that she can do it. Yep. And so it's like, I don't, I wouldn't say that, you know, I don't know, we don't know their back end conversations of that. That's what maybe he promised to her, but I'm pretty sure at some point she thought that, you know what I'm saying? Especially when shit really started moving. Like, man, if I get him lit, not yep. only do I get what he promised me, but like, but I can, I can talk about this and I can tell yep. people this was me. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's like the fourth thing. And in many ways it's a culmination of those things, mm-hmm. but it's career. Yeah. Right. You got those people who truly say, I want to be in this industry. So I'm willing to one, do work that might not be for pay as much because I find value in this industry. I'm just happier working in this versus, I don't know, working at UPS or something. Yeah. Right. Even if it's three times the amount of money. And then on top of that, it's like, I understand this is a case study for the future of my career, mm-hmm. like you said, right? Whether that's my own independent agency or when I, if I want to go into the system, right? Yeah. Work somewhere at yeah. a label and I can say, well, I worked with X, Y, and Z artists, right? Or, well, if you're an artist yourself, right? You just, I work with this artist, but then it's on you to be successful. But of course, of course, they want you to be as successful as possible because then they can say they work with you. Yeah. So, like, that's all, that's all it is. It comes down to exactly what you said. Uh, what speaks to somebody? What are their motivations? Mm-hmm. And now you got your company, right? Going back full circle, we talk about hiring, the way you look at your team, how you motivate them, whether it's equity, whether it's understanding these other personal behaviors they have. But if you want to take on this whole, this true mindset of I, I'm independent, you got to say, all right, that means I have a company. And if I have a company, oh shit, I'm the CEO, or I'm at least the board of directors, you know what I mean? Somewhere in the C-suite. What does that mean? That comes with additional responsibility, and I feel like a lot of people, they like that idea, right? If I'm an owner, I'm a boss, but they don't want any of that stuff that comes with it. That shit is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what nobody says. Like, yeah. Nah. It's a it, job, but it ain't fun. <laughs> It's, uh, the end result, right, is the most fun part and freedom. Yeah. Like, there's some personality things <laughs> that it might speak to, but the nuances are not fun at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sitting down, paying payroll ain't fun. Paying taxes ain't fun. <laughs> Every time something don't click, it's like, like, damn, you really don't. I got to figure out how to make you get this. I, I got to figure <laughs> out how to translate this knowledge in my head to make you understand. Or you're going to go find somebody new and start from scratch, right? Yeah. It's, it's a risk. That's, Both of us up. That's a whole other conversation. We're not even going <laughs> to. <laughs> We're not gonna even get into that. That'll, that'll be like a special episode, so y'all can be ready. We, we can do a deep dive in 
and thinking about just team, uh, you know, company ownership. That is, that's, <laughs> uh, yeah, you speaking to me, bro. All right, see where you're going. Appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you want to be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.